Starting out, we need to strip down a whole bunch of wire. This is a Cat3 network wire that I got from a garage sale. Inside is a string you can pull on to strip off the outer layer, and inside that is eight strands that are twisted together in pairs. First thing is to separate the pair by running it through a small hole in this jig I made. And then we'll put it through again, but this time across a razor blade. This takes off just enough plastic that we can then pull everything off pretty easily. And this part is why I have a glove on. If you pull too hard through the blade, you can get little burrs on the wire that can cut up your hand pretty bad. That's why I have a band-aid on my thumb. Then we do that um, 600 more times. Yeah, it's tedious. I bundled them together in groups of 10 and groups of 50, just so I could keep track of how many I had and so I could tell you how many I had in the end, which was 600. I started out thinking I could do the trunk first and then split them up, because that's you know the way I've seen other people do it, but that didn't go so well, so I went the other way. So like I said, got 600 strands of copper here, about 26 gauge, and they're all roughly three feet long. So start out by twisting two together, and I left about eight inches at the end to turn into leaves uh, when we're all finished. But I wish I had done more like 15 inches. I would have worked out a lot better. Once you have a pair that's twisted, you can combine those into a set of four. It's just like those dumb merging apps on your phone. I recommend not sticking to a measurement for your twists as far as the length. Uh, make it random and varied for how much you twist everything together. Then every couple sections I would add in an extra smaller one, like on level 8 I would add a set of 4, or on level 32 I would put in another set of 8. No, but not every time, you know, make it random. And then I would also put sets of 2 kind of all over the place at random. Once you get into the triple digits it gets pretty difficult to get a good twist out of it. Use pliers and some muscle. Just be careful not to squeeze too hard with the pliers and risk damaging the wire. Scratching it up and make it look gross. Once you have the length of your trunk established, we can start working on those roots. And you basically have to make the whole tree over again. Except this time I'm going to make each section a lot shorter than before. When doing the roots, every so often I would pull out one strand and leave it out of the twist to leave little hairs along the length. And then you just cut off whatever extra you have. To make it just a little bit more realistic, we need to take each section and over twist it until it starts to bunch up on itself. This will give the roots a much more twisted and gnarly appearance. With the thinner sections, don't twist it too much or it'll just snap off. Just use your pliers to bend it kind of back and forth to make it wavy. Now we're attaching the tree to the base, uh, which is this piece of firewood that I found. I screwed it in in a few places and we can cover those up with some wire, but you notice how floppy the tree is? So I fixed that by hammering a quarter inch steel rod through the trunk and into the wood to hold it up straight. It would have been fine without it, but I like having the control that the rod provides when doing the final positioning. That does it for the roots, now we can start sculpting the top. Here I'm using my fingers, pinching the wire in both hands and wiggling it all around wildly to give it more texture. Then I bunch it all up in a loose ball at the end of each branch. This is where I wish I had left a little bit more wire to play with. The final piece turned out great, I just wanted a little bit more density in those leaves. Later, if it keeps bugging me, I can always go back in and weave in more wire to make that more dense. Why are teddy bears never hungry? Because they're always stuffed. <laughs> and that's it. We're all done.